Joining us now, the national sports editor of the Daily Hive and their offside sports vertical, Rob Williams, Rob, the hockey guy. And full disclosure here, everybody, prior to his hit every week, Rob sends us a, a bunch of topics that he thinks would be interesting, oftentimes topics that the Daily Hive has covered over the course of the week. This week, he sends us a note and no Frygate, Rob Williams. <laughs> If ever there was a Rob the Hockey Guy offside Daily Hive story, is that's it the not? most Daily Hive that's ever Daily Hive. Exactly. It's Guys, I, I just I love Triple O's too much. <laughs> you didn't want to denigrate the brand. <laughs> didn't want to denigrate the brand. No, I okay. I'm not. I saw that and I'm like, that's not a typical box of fries that they give you. I don't think. Sure, I sure hope it's not. not. Surely no. it's not. I hope this is the work of one rogue clerk and not a more expansive effort to generally speaking decrease the size of the fry order for the sake of the bottom line of the billion. Generally order. speaking, it's just the prices at the arena rather than the servings that are the other like the other day, like uh, the last game I went to, I had the carved roast beef sandwich, you know, very tasty, uh, no, very good. It, it's just, it was really expensive. That's we, all. we covered it extensively. Yeah. Um, one of the great additions to Rogers arena and Vancouver Canucks hockey games is chef Rob Bartley and the culinary experience that you can have now at Rogers arena, because there's actually some really good food offerings there now. No, they're not cheap. But like, I'd rather spend twenty bucks on the lobster roll or the carved roast beef sandwich than the old stadium catering fare, which to this day is terrible. Yeah. So, oh, I, 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 yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I, I feel like there's a lot of things that get the hype, that get the notoriety in stadium food, you know, in and around Vancouver. You know, whether it's BC Place or elsewhere, you know, like the. Whatever, how many feet are the hot dogs at uh, at Nat Bailey Stadium now? Seventeen right? feet, I think. Right, yeah, like feet. those get the hype. Those all get the hype. The roast beef sandwiches are great. Whatever, the best the best thing to get at a stadium in Vancouver is the Triple O's burger and fries, bar none. Really, yes. old school, kicking it, I, old school. Okay. If we're talking about price and what you get for it and everything, that's that's the go to. I, okay. I, I hear another another story. I'll tell you guys during during that uh, that awful 2021 season where there were no fans in the stands, and there were you know maybe 10 to 15 of us media folks way up in the not even in the press box because we had to social distance. We were up in one of the suites at Rogers Arena. They didn't have the usual like media meal like they would have. But they had triple O's open. And I used to joke that, you know, at that time, the, you're not doing very much during the pandemic, had not much to look forward to. The Canucks were god awful that season. I look forward to the triple O's burger. I, half the time I'd go there just for the burger. <laughs> Can you believe that we are in the place that we are right now? You talk about the god awful seasons. As we inch towards the end of the season, just 13 games left on the schedule for the Vancouver Canucks. They get the bounce back win versus Buffalo. So they're, what are they, 5 1 and 1 in the last seven games? Um, I mean, things are starting to look like they could compete for first overall, certainly first in the Western Conference and the division title. Can you believe that we're actually here at this point? I mean, we've been pinching ourselves throughout the season with this team, but they're almost done the 82 here, Rob. Yeah, it's, it's what what an incredible season it's been, right? Like, and I, it, we're now to the point where remember the 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 bar had been set so low for so long, and now we're nitpicking at like you know there's a minor panic about Elias Pettersson's play because he's been you know somewhat subpar by his standards for a couple of weeks. Like he's gonna he might score a hundred points. <laughs> like, like this is uh you know finally the bar is being raised a little bit and i think we're you know we we should be talking about this these things because it's not about making the playoffs anymore they're going to make the playoffs now it's about how realistic of a stanley cup contender are they and yeah i mean i i can i believe it i'm, I'm still not sure if i can like it's still kind of this the season just came out of absolutely nowhere um 
to be at the level that they're at. And, and it's, it's wonderful to see. I now I, the, the, you know, Canucks pessimist in me now is going, okay, they had their greatest season of all time was 2010, 2011. They win the president's trophy. They get the defending cup champion, Chicago Blackhawks in the first round. Mm-hmm. And th- their second best year was the very next season. They get the eventual Stanley cup winners, LA Kings. If the playoffs started today, the Canucks would get the Vegas Golden Knights in the first round. It would be the ultimate Canuck luck if they get, you know, arguably one of the, what, it's probably Vegas and Edmonton are probably the two teams you'd least like to face in the first round. It would be such Canuck luck if they win the West and get Vegas in round one. Doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem right at all. They beat Chicago, the defending Stanley Cup champion in 2011, we might remember. Huh? Yeah, but President's after, Trophy season. But they, and they that's grew. the third kick at those guys, though. And remember how... how I, I would like was, three kicks at Vegas. Wasn't it like the Minnesota Wild or some some team that, that nearly made it ahead of the Blackhawks that year, too? I think Chicago mm-hmm. kind of backed their way in. Like, imagine that 2011 team going against, you know, uh, a a lesser opponent in the first round, they probably sweep them or beat them in five and are more well set up for their run. But I digress. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, hey, um, the playoff experience, JT Miller, Ian Cole have nearly half of the 402 games of playoff experience on the roster, which is actually a pretty solid number. Like Blake and I have had this debate here in recent weeks that while much of the core has very little playoff experience, a lot of the surrounding cast actually has playoff experience. Do you think it's going to matter, Rob? Yeah, so I I was digging into the, the playoff numbers, the playoff experience numbers this week. It's interesting to see, like, there's, you know, 402 games of playoff experience on the Canucks roster. And, there's, and when you look at, like, playoff experience and you go line by line on each one, you know, there's guys like Elias Pettersson, Quinn Hughes, Brock Besser, each have 17 games of playoff experience. But, you know, like five of those are the play-in game. Do we count that against Minnesota? All of them are without fans in the stands. So I do wonder, like, this is going to be a different experience for them, right? Like, you know, sure, they have playoff experience, but, you know, it's not to the, you know, not to the same level as I, as I think, you know, a guy like Ian Cole, surely, you know, having won a pair of Stanley Cups, that's, that's quite a bit more, you know, he's a bit more battle tested, I would, I would argue. And if you look at the Canucks roster, half their roster has never played a playoff game with fans in the stands, because you've got, like I said, Pedersen, Hughes, Besser, Connor Garland has only ever played in the bubble playoffs. Demko, Di Giuseppe as well. And then you've got other guys, you know, obviously like the younger players, like Nils you know, Hoaglander's never played a playoff game, but even guys like Hugh Suter's never played a playoff game. Uh, Phil Hronick has never played a playoff game. Mm. And that, that one kind of surprised me, but of course he never, he's wasn't able to, to play one, not even one in the bubble because Detroit wasn't, wasn't part of it. So will it matter? I mean, I think it matters, but what is it is it going to matter in a good way or in a bad way? I, I do think that there's something to be said for players that have waited so long to play in a playoff game and with fans in the stands, of course. And like, how much is that going to like give them juice to really go in the in the postseason? And I think that you know a guy like Elias Pettersson is going to be just completely amped to to be to be playing playoff games with you know Rogers Arena going going nuts um but yeah i i think it's going to be really really interesting to see rob the canucks have one of the uh most physical bruising defensemen in all of the national hockey league scott stevens reincarnate but you'd rather talk about the points of Quinn Hughes um I, I'm confused really it's uh Williams is having an off day here yeah no Frygate and he wants to talk Hughes points as opposed to the physicality. physical intimidation yeah. at yeah. the blue line yeah Got, I, guys I'll, I'll smart okay, up for, I'll smart yeah. up for next week I did love I did love the reaction of Hughes like just you know just laughing <laughs> laughing off the, the the big hit that he that he uh that he threw last night but yeah, it's it's funny how like 
we were debating this in the press box the other day when Hughes set the new Canuck record for points in a season. And like, it was like barely a thing. Right. Like they acknowledged it in Rogers arena. I think TJ Oshie got a bigger applause for playing a thousand games than Quinn Hughes did for like breaking the all time, uh, single season defenseman scoring record. Because I think it's just, everyone's just like ho-hum. Like, I think people are not impressed by, I think that was my argument. Like, do people even care about right. breaking single season points records for defensemen by, for, with Quinn Hughes? I think it's just, a, it's a fait accompli. I think everyone just, knows, <laughs> everyone just knows he's going to do it. He's broken it three years in a row. But man, what an unbelievable accomplishment. And he's up to uh, 79 points now. So he's, in all likelihood, going to be the first defenseman in Canucks history to be a point-a-game player, which is phenomenal. And in terms of, like, the all-time scoring for Quinn Hughes, he's now about to – he's going to be second in, in Canucks defenseman scoring all-time very soon. So he's one point behind Yerke Lume and Dennis Kearns right now, and he's five back of Matthias Olin. And when you think about, like, you know, Olin was – you know, played for the Canucks for a long, long time. Hughes has played, like, Olin played 770 games, and he was, you know, an offensive defenseman. Like, he played on the on the power play for the Canucks. And Hughes is going to surpass him in less than half as many games. Like, that's just bonkers. And he's now 89 points behind Alex Edler for first all-time. Edler played 925 games. So <laughs> that's unbelievable. Mm. And Hughes could pass him as soon as next season. We well, have I, It's a great point, Rob. Uh, a fait accompli is the exact phrase for it. And here's the thing. It's been the case since the moment he stepped on the ice with the Canucks. <laughs> like, you watched yes. him play once and said, if this guy stays healthy, he'll be the best defenseman in Canucks history. I was watching, yeah, the, game with, none. I was watching the game with my niece, and my niece was like, that's Quinn Hughes. He's my favorite player. Do you know he set the world record? And I said, <laughs> wasn't a world record team record no big deal <laughs> and it, it hasn't been given where the bar was it was no big deal i think it's like we're now used to having hughes in the same conversation by all these stats accounts as like it's it's always like the only defensemen to accomplish accomplish this are like quinn hughes ray bork paul coffee and bobby or like we're used yeah, to right. him being compared to those guys i guess getting compared to uh yurke lume and dennis kearns is it doesn't uh yeah. Have the, the, have the same now. gravitas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, the Canucks Mount Rushmore of defensemen matters not when you're on the NHL Mount Rushmore of defensemen with that trio. Great stuff, Rob. You salvaged the hit. Appreciate that. <laughs> Catch I'll up be next better week. next week. <laughs> hey, everybody. If you're enjoying what you're seeing here, then follow along with Secure Some Price on YouTube. I promise more content coming. It, they call it, the kids call it subscribe on YouTube. Well, how about liking it? Do that as well. Smash it right now.